Good afternoon. We are here today from Roshni Media with Lori Matsukawa. I have known her for almost two decades and I've been following her. She's one inspirational lady who has worked hard for diversity awareness and she is an inspirational role model for all of us. So today we'll try to learn a little bit about her story and also about her as a Roshni inspirational person. Welcome to Roshni. Lori, how Thank are you? you? I am very good and I'm so glad that you agreed to talk with me because I really want to offer some encouraging words to women, especially women of color, because um, there is a place for them here in the, in the industry, in the broadcast industry. Yeah. I want to encourage people to, to express themselves, to tell their stories in broadcast, on you know, media, on all platforms, because we have to hear their stories. Yes. Uh, how does it feel to be a woman, this being a women's month, as you know, I think all months should be women's <laughs> month, uh, this being March, how, does, how do you see women in the news media? I think women have made huge strides in the last few decades, especially yes. in media. We are seeing, of course, many women on camera, but we are also seeing many women in the back offices yes. directing the business of news and the business of broadcast, and so I'm very encouraged by that. Not enough, not enough women yes. back there, but slowly I see the numbers improving. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a few questions that everybody wants to know a little bit about you. to ask you a few questions that everybody wants to know a little bit about you. So could you please tell us a little bit about you and also why were you so fascinated by the media? Why did you choose this profession? I was born and raised in Hawaii. My parents were school teachers and so we didn't have a whole lot of money. So when I was in high school, I began looking for places to get scholarships so that I could go to college. And one of the places that I considered was a contest. In fact, a friend of mine came up and said, hey, if you join this contest, Miss Teenage America, and you win the contest, you could get a college scholarship. And you don't have to wear a bathing suit, so you might even have a chance to win. <laughs> so I said, oh, OK, I'll give it a try. And so I went to the Miss Teenage America pageant, and they judge you on your knowledge of current events, mm -hmm. talent, and poise and personality, how well you can answer questions. Yes. I won the contest. Oh, nice. What a shock for a little gal from Hawaii. Yes. And so my senior year in high school, I was part-time student, part-time Miss Teenage America. Mm -hmm. And everywhere I went as Miss Teenage America, I was interviewed by journalists. And I thought, now that's a terrific job. I would get paid to meet yes. people and learn about them and tell their stories. So that's when I started thinking about becoming a journalist. So when I went to college, I was able to kind of focus on communication. And I was in an interning at a newspaper in Hawaii. And originally, I thought I would be a print reporter, because that's what I did. Yes, yes. But then um, when I was talking to my managing editor, he said, Lori, have you ever considered television? I said, no. He says, you know, they hire women these days. That's how long ago. <laughs> He says, you might get a job on TV. I said, oh. So I got an internship at KPIX in San Francisco, uh, my final year in college, and started applying for both kinds of work, print and television. And I got, out of 100 letters that I sent out, I got two yes letters back. One from the Los Angeles Times. Okay. They needed a business reporter. Mm -hmm and one from a tiny station in Redding, California, population 20,000 back then, a very <laughs> tiny town. Mm -hmm. And I was in the Greyhound bus station thinking, what should I do? Which job should I take? Mm -hmm. And I picked television because I thought it was a young person's job. Yes. You have to carry your own gear. You have to drive your own car. You have to pretty much be the only mm -hmm. person doing right. your job. And I figured, when I'm uh, toothless and wrinkled, then I can be a print reporter. Yeah. So this was my big plan. I would be a television journalist first, and then when I was toothless and wrinkled, 
I would be a print reporter. And look at the irony, like print is almost kind of dying. It's yeah. Your opinion, as you know, Roshni Media is all about creating global diversity. So what would be your thoughts on a need for one world or a need for diversity globally? I think it's important that we recognize that we are one world with many people in it. And we have to celebrate each other. Um, one of the first things I did when I arrived at King was participate in a program called Celebrate the Differences, where we tried to incorporate all the activities and all the personalities in the city of Seattle, but from different diverse communities. So we learned a little bit about the Latino community. We learned a little bit about the African community. We learned a little bit about the South Asian community. It was just a wonderful way to get to know one another and realize this is the world. We have yes. to represent yes. the world in our product. Mm -hmm. And so that's always been kind of an important thing for me because at the time I was one of the few women of color in the industry. Yes. So I wanted to show more and more yes. people of color in the industry to, so that young people could say, that's, that's a job I could do. Just like how I said, hey, that's a job I could do. I wanted young people in communities of color to say the same thing, yes. Yes. especially young women. Mm -hmm. especially yeah. You, it's so much in the theme with why Roshni was started. And Roshni started in Seattle. So I was here teaching uh, creative writing, and I really thought there was a need for people to understand information or role models from all walks of life. And that's where I started compiling these inspirational stories from all walks of life uh, for Roshni. And today, obviously, Would you see who your role models are, um, anybody who inspired you, because we're all about inspirational in, inspiration in our lives? Um, it's interesting. Um, the people that come to mind mm -hmm. in my life were not journalists at all. Yeah. One of them was my piano teacher, wow. who was so encouraging, who said, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Another teacher that was inspiring was my choir teacher. She was the one that actually took the choir out beyond the classroom walls and had us perform in public. Oh, Not wow. just American songs, but Polynesian songs. Again, spreading the culture, sharing the culture. And so uh, she was very inspiring because she thought it was the best thing in the world to do. And yes. now when I look back, I think, yes, wow. she was right. And the third person who inspired me was a businessman, a Caucasian businessman who said, we don't have enough participation in the commerce, the business side. Mm -hmm. And so he was very much encouraging people of color, young children of color, to get interested in business and make a mark for yourself. You know, realize the American dream. Yes. So yes. it's interesting that none of them were journalists, but all of them had the same yes. message, yes. which was to pursue your dream, to not be discouraged. And um, there was a coach who recently passed away at Pacific Lutheran University, Frosty Westering. Mm -hmm. His big thing was, Make the big time where you are. Yes. And when you yes. think about that, that's very important. Where you are right now is where you can make an yes. impact. So do it. Yes. Just do it. Be brave. No fear. Those are the kinds of messages that I got from these people. And those are the messages you try to give out to the right. younger generation as well, right? What would be one of your most inspirational moment in your life? We call it Roshni moment, like light <laughs> moment. Uh, anything that you recall that kind of became like a turning point of your life? Well, definitely the Miss Teenage America experience was yes. a turning point because it pointed me toward journalism. Yes. But one of the most um, moving things just happened recently where uh, there were three Northwest people who were being honored with the Medal of Freedom, the Presidential yeah. Medal of Freedom. Among them, um, a Native American activist, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And among them, an environmentalist. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and among them, a Japanese American who fought discrimination during World War II. Yes. 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 So here was a chance to combine coverage of an important event featuring three individuals from different communities 
um, presenting their stories, which are so fascinating and so yes, interesting. Yes, yes. And being at the White House was such a thrill for me. And it was kind of one of those stories where I just kind of jumped out of my chair and said, we have to go do this. <laughs> yes. And it was one of those moments where I, if the boss said no, I was going to fight, I was going to fight to the finish. But of course, the boss said yes, yeah. absolutely cover this story. And then to be in the same room with President Obama, mm -hmm. our first African-American president, mm -hmm. raised in Hawaii. Yes. And so <laughs> that was just so thrilling. To me, it was kind of a pinnacle. It yeah. was like telling the stories that are so important mm -hmm. to our history, showing the communities of color and the successful role models yes. we have. That was just a real Roshni moment. Yes, thank you. I'm standing in the White <laughs> House like East Room, yes. talling, you know, talking to You being a woman and a role model, many young women obviously draw a lot of inspiration from you. So what would be your message to the young women from all walks, all communities? What would be your message to them, to our women? I have two favorite sayings. Mm -hmm. The first one is an old surfing uh, motto, which says, no fear. Uh, as you go along your way, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to your job, when it comes to, you know, your own country and community, have no fear. Do it what you need to do. Do what you want to do. Have no fear. Don't worry about the competition. Don't worry what people will say about you. If it's a right thing to do, it must be done. And who better to do it than you? The second thing, and excuse me because I am a storyteller, Yes. Uh, there was uh, one of my favorite rides at Disneyland is the Dumbo ride. You know Dumbo mm -hmm. the elephant goes yes. around in a circle. And on the Dumbo ride is a little saying, it says, believe and soar. And you know the story of Dumbo. He believed he could fly, and he could. And so I would like to share that with other women. I would like to tell them to believe and soar because it is only if you truly believe something yes. that you will put forth the effort and achieve it. That's and you will soar, yes. right? Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> she believes, she soars. So yeah. thank there you. you go. Thank you so much. And thank you for being part of Roshni. So. Thank you. This is Lori Matsukawa. Thank you, Rashmi, Mani, and Roshni Media.